Good day. As I discussed in my previous programme for this channel, the US President, Joseph Biden, made comments during a town hall meeting in Baltimore in which he appeared to say, in fact, he unambiguously said, that the United States is committing to defending Taiwan from a Chinese attack. Now, this comment of Joe Biden's was immediately the subject of clarification from the White House, which said that US policy towards Taiwan had not in fact changed and that the only policy that the United States has is one based on the Taiwan Relations Act, which says that the United States will provide Taiwan with the means to defend itself, but will not itself come to Taiwan's defence. And similar comments were subsequently made by Defence Secretary Lloyd Austin, all of which appeared to be intended to calm down the situation, to return the position to the existing position, or rather the official position, of what is sometimes called strategic ambiguity of the United States, on the one hand, pretending that it will not defend Taiwan, continuing to recognise China as one country, one country which includes Taiwan, but simultaneously giving all kinds of hints and suggestions that actually it does have some kind of un, um, unexplained or unclarified commitment to Taiwan and that it regards Taiwan as a friend and that it will therefore do something in respect to in in response to a Chinese attack on Taiwan, though it is never made entirely clear what that thing will be. Anyway, that seems to have been the attempt of the US authorities to return to the position to the position of strategic ambiguity after President Biden's comments, which appeared to suggest on the contrary that the United States is openly committed to Taiwan and will, in fact, uh, committed to defending Taiwan in the event of a Chinese attack upon it. Anyway, inevitably, there have now been the Chinese responses to all of these statements and comments. And importantly, perhaps they've been strong and unambiguous, but also, by Chinese standards, rather measured. We start with the first one, which is the one that took place, which, which was given by the foreign ministry spokesman Wang Wenbin in response to a question from Reuters during the foreign ministry's regular press conference. And this is what the question from Reuters was. The U.S. leader said when asked if the U.S. would come to the defence of Taiwan that the U.S. has commit a commitment to do so. The White House later said there is no change in U.S. policy on Taiwan. Do you have any comment? And Wang Wenbin said the following. Taiwan is an inalienable part of China's territory. The Taiwan question is purely China's internal affair that allows for no foreign interference. On issues that bear on China's sovereignty, territorial integrity and other co core interests, no one shall expect China to make any compromise or trade-offs. No one should underestimate the resolve, the will and the ability of the Chinese people to defend their national sovereignty and territorial integrity. Do not stand on the opposite side of 1.4 billion Chinese people. We urge the United States to earnestly abide by the One China Principle and the stipulations in the Three China-US Joint Communiques. Be prudent with its words and actions on the Taiwan question and avoid sending wrong signals to, to the Taiwanese independence separatist forces lest it should seriously damage China-US relations and peace and stability across the Taiwan Straits. Now, that answer is clearly very carefully prepared in advance, and it contains within it all the key Chinese talking points. Taiwan is part of China. It is an inalienable part 
of Chinese territory. The Taiwan question, so-called, is a purely internal affair of the People's Republic of China and it, one which about which China will acknowledge and accept no interference or what it calls foreign interference by outside powers. It is one that bears directly on issues of China's sovereignty and territorial integrity, and it is therefore a core interest. There can be no compromise or trade-offs on this position from China's point of view. It is for China an existential issue. Anybody who doesn't understand that is going to find themselves in confrontation with China with 1.4 billion Chinese people. And as for the United States, it needs to be extremely careful in its choice of words, because unless it is, it might send signals to the people in Taiwan who want independence from China, in which case there could be a crisis, there could be serious damage done to China-US relations, or there could be damage done to peace and stability across the Taiwan Straits, the latter being, in effect, a reminder of China's willingness and ability to change the situation on the Ta island of Taiwan by force and of its straight stated readiness to do so. So that is a very strong comment from Wang Wenbin. However, it is also a measured comment. It doesn't mention President Biden by name. It doesn't directly criticise him. It doesn't say that he's acting in an arrogant or officious way. It doesn't accuse him directly of interfering in the foreign or in the internal affairs of the People's Republic of China. And it doesn't accuse him either of putting in jeopardy the peace and stability across the Taiwan Strait. So it is a strong statement of views by China, but it is also a measured statement. Now, why would that be so? Well, let's first of all go to Global Times, and we will see that they have published two articles in response to this statement of these comments of President Biden's. And they follow the same measured line that the uh, statement by the spokes by, by Wang Wenbin, the Chinese foreign ministry spokesman, has followed. So the first statement, uh, the first comment, is set out in a editorial um, by Global Times, and that editorial reads as follows. The title is "Biden won't make good on defending Taiwan claim." And the editorial reads as follows. In an interview with CNN on Thursday, U.S. President Biden was asked whether the U.S. would protect Taiwan Island if the Chinese mainland attacked. Yes, we have a commitment to do that, he answered. The interview quickly attracted eyeballs and interpretations. As is well known, the United States has long held strategic ambiguity when it comes to the Taiwan question, not to make statements over whether to defend Taiwan Island if the People's Liberation Army makes military moves to reach reunification across the Straits. If Biden's answer implies that the US is giving up strategic ambiguity and that US troops will fight the PLA if a war breaks out in the Straits, that would be a major shift in the cross strait situation and will be bound to trigger fierce confrontation. And then in August this year, when Biden attempted to appease his allies after the US pullout from Afghanistan, he said, we made a sacred commitment to Article 5 that if in fact anyone were to evade or invade or take action against our NATO allies, we would respond same with Japan, same with South Korea, same with Taiwan. The rhetoric caused chaos at the time. The White House soon put out the fire, indicating that US policy on the Taiwan Straits has not changed. US academic circles and mainstream public opinion mostly believed that Biden's reply was a slip of the tongue. We'll come to that point about the slip of the tongue shortly.
After Biden's interview with CNN on Thursday, a White House official clarified again the president's comments on the Taiwan question, saying that there is no change in the U.S.'s Taiwan policy, stressing the U.S. defense relationship with Taiwan is guided by the Taiwan Relations Act. Biden's words are not backed by basic U.S. policy or laws, Even the Taiwan Relations Act and six assurances do not include content on U.S. commitment to send troops to defend the island. They only touch upon weapons sales to Taiwan Island, helping to enhance the island's defense capability. U.S. diplomats could explain Biden's rhetoric as a slip of the tongue. Notice the use of the word could. Since Biden often speaks incautiously, many people may, again note the word may, also think that way. Taking his answer literally, Biden's statement did break the previous US stance on Taiwan Island. It created room for imagination that the Biden administration might be hatching a strategic change on the Taiwan question. Taiwan secessionist forces may be encouraged through his words and further stir up trouble by taking advantage of this statement, misleading people on the island. Whether it is a slip of the tongue, such a statement will not influence the Chinese mainland's determination and will over its stance on cross-straits ties. U.S. strategic ambiguity over the case may have been its tactic in the early years, but it is now becoming a forced choice to make without other alternatives in the face of reality. That is an extraordinarily important and interesting statement. The military strength between the two strides of the Straits used to be relatively balanced in the past. The United States had advantages and its strategic ambiguity was out of its diplomatic need towards China. But now the People's Liberation Army has an overwhelming advantage over the military on Taiwan Island with full capacity to cause unbearable results to U.S. troops if they dared defend the island and even to wipe them out. Only by sticking to strategic ambiguity can the U.S. maintain its position now, avoiding the scenario of either retreating or being involved in war. Over the past two years, some Americans wanted the United States to abandon the strategic ambiguity policy and replace it with strategic clarity. Their voices cannot be compared to those who clamour about human rights, which are far more violent and arrogant. In terms of the Taiwan question, US political circles and public opinion are generally cautious. They hold a negative and fearful attitude to toward turning a fight with the PLA into a U.S. obligation. Biden does not have the political authority to announce that the U.S. military will defend Taiwan when war breaks out, nor does he have the confidence to have a strategic collision with the Chinese mainland in the Taiwan Straits to support Taiwan secessionists until a desperate fight erupts and make the Americans bear the risk of a bottomless war for Taiwan Island. So even if he dared make a slip of the tongue, he would dare not really think so from the bottom of his heart. Achieving peaceful reunification is a long-term policy of the Chinese mainland, but to deal with Taiwan secessionists, we could resort to any means, including US, US, U, including using force to punish them. Seeking independence and resisting reunification by military means is a dead end. And any move supporting Taiwan secessionists is a hostile act against China. Obviously, even, if, even for the United States, it cannot make 
such an act recklessly. So that's an interesting um, editorial. Note that it is ambiguous about whether the Chinese believe that, uh, uh, Joe's, uh, that Joe Biden's comments were a slip of the tongue or not. But there is an accompanying article in Global Times which makes it absolutely clear that the Chinese do not think it was a slip of the tongue. And the, word, the article by Wang Qi, Li Xin, and Yu Xin Cui reads as follows. The title begins, Defend Taiwan can hardly be seen as a slip of the tongue, but Biden has yet to say how or dare stand to, or dare to stand against 1.4 billion Thai Chinese. And then the article goes on to say, the US could come to Taiwan's defense if the island faces a Chinese mainland incursion, US President Biden confirmed on, sun, on Thursday. The strongest comments from the 78-year-old leader were believers challenging Chinese mainland's red line and also deviating from Washington's strategic ambiguity on the Taiwan question. Despite the White House attempting to clarify Biden's comments to calm the situation, saying the president was not announcing any change in our policy and there is no change in our policy, China's foreign ministry on Friday warned the US that China has no room for compromise when it comes to safeguarding sovereignty, security and territorial integrity. No one should underestimate the strong resolve, determination and capability of the Chinese people to safeguard their national sovereignty and territorial integrity. And Chinese foreign ministry spokesman urged the United States not to stand against 1.4 billion Chinese people. We urge the United States to stand to earnestly abide by the One China Principle and the Three China-US Joint Communiques. Be cautious in words and deeds on the Taiwan question and refer, refrain from sending any wrong signals to secessionists so as not to serious, seriously damage China-US relations and peace and stability across the China, China steps, Taiwan Straits. When asked about whether the U.S. would protect Taiwan if China attacked in a CNN town hall meeting on Thursday night, Biden said yes and said that the United States has a commitment to do so. Biden's comments came amid rising tension in the Taiwan Straits, with EU Parliament lawmakers pushing forward a resolution to deepen so-called political and economic ties with the island and the Biden administration's pick for ambassador to China vowing to make the island a tough nut to crack. Observers said the overall US policy towards the Taiwan question is becoming clearer and China should not interpret some of the US moves seeking cooperation with China as signs of softening. Moreover, the argument of domestic hawkish pressure in the US as a reason for being tough on China is hardly impressive. No experts reached by Global Times believe that Biden's remarks should not be seen as a slip of the tongue or an accident. China needs to intensify its communication with the US in diplomacy and in military, China should be fully prepared for tactical interventions by the United States. Analysts said that many hawks see the Taiwan Relations Act as an important justification for defending Taiwan. In April 2001, then US President George W. Bush said the US would do whatever it took to help Taiwan defend itself in the event of an attack by the Chinese mainland. Bush is the only president who has made such comments before Biden in the past two decades. The US is in the process of constantly clarifying its one China policy, including some so-called Taiwan-related legislation passed in the Trump era, 
Diao Daming, an associate professor of Zhenmin University of China, told Global Times. No matter what the White House says, Biden's remarks illustrate a U.S. obsession with Taiwan on which his younger, younger aides, including members of Congress, are not backing down. Experts said, looking at the larger picture, the U.S.'s signals on Taiwan are still vague and complicated, Considering the need for cooperation with the Chinese mainland, some U.S. politicians are considering whether to inherit such rhetoric from the Trump era. Regarding, uh, in some areas, the adjustment may be positive. In others, however, it may be negative. Biden is trying to convince himself of what to avoid, but at the same time, he can't let go of this hyped-up obsession on certain issues. So the overall view that the Chinese clearly have is that this is not a slip of the tongue. That was also my view, which I expressed in my, artic in my video of yesterday. I believe, and the Chinese clearly believe, that there is indeed a US commitment to defending Taiwan. And this article in Global Times hints that this commitment to defending Taiwan is one that goes all the way back to the George W. Bush era. era. However, the point the Chinese are making is that this situation has changed. So, so that the situation has now changed radically since the time when George W. Bush was president of the United States. At that time, the United States was the world's hyperpower. It was by far the most military, militarily powerful country in the world. The Chinese military was in no position to compete or confront it. And the United States was in a position at that time to honour whatever commitment it had made in private to Taiwan um, and therefore act upon it. Today, however, the situation is completely different. China's economic power has grown by leaps and bounds. So has its military power. China now already possesses overwhelming military superiority over the United States, close to the Taiwan Island, and would defeat the United States if the United States were to try to honour that Bush-era commitment to defend Taiwan. So China can take comments like those made by Joe Biden in its stride. All that Biden did was blurt out something which, in fact, is actual private and actual private assurance that the United States has already made to Taiwan and which it made 20 years ago in very different circumstances. He wasn't supposed to do that in that kind of public way. And the United States has always pretended that it hadn't made that commitment to defend Taiwan because up to now it had not wanted to rock the boat too much with China. But what previously was a choice, a choice by the United States to hide behind strategic ambiguity, to pretend that it had not made a commitment to defend Taiwan, which it had in fact made, has now become a necessity. Because the reality is, as both the US and China know, the United States does not possess the military means to defend Taiwan. So in the event that there is a Chinese attack on Taiwan, as the very well, very well may be over the next few years, in that case, the United States will have no realistic option but to back down because, if, uh, because to do otherwise would be to invite military disaster. So that is the summary of the Chinese position. We see it over the three statements, the statement by the Chinese foreign ministry spokesman, the Global Times editorial, and the article in Global Times. Biden was not 
engaging in a slip of the tongue when he talk about, talked about a commitment. Such a commitment does exist. The Chinese believe it goes back all the way to the George W. Bush era. But the reality is that the Americans, when they are no longer able to abide by that commitment as they once could, and they know it, and time is on China's side, so China doesn't need to panic or worry too much about this admission that Joe Biden blurted out. So it's a very confident position taken by the Chinese, one which indicates that they believe the time is on their side. Their military forces are getting stronger all the time. The Taiwanese defence minister has acknowledged that by 2025, China will be in a position to conquer Taiwan without Taiwan being able to put up much in the way of effective resistance. And war games in the Pentagon have already highlighted the fact that China would defeat the United States in any scenario involving uh, Taiwan, involving a battle over Taiwan, if that confrontation were limited to conventional weapons. And I'm going to say something else. I sense here also some of the confidence that the Chinese are now acquiring as a result, possibly, of that hypersonic glide vehicle test that we're told took, took place in August. They have undoubtedly been reading all the expressions of alarm and shock and dismay which have been circulating in the American media and which clearly are traceable back to senior US officials. And they sense that the military, the nuclear strategic balance is also starting to shift in their favour so that the one important card that the United States still had to play in any military confrontation with China over Taiwan, which was the US's readiness to threaten China with use of nuclear weapons if China did press forward with an invasion of Taiwan, that threat is diminishing because China's nuclear strategic power is growing to the point where it can actually see off such threats because it can put the United States in a position where the United States would face devastating consequences upon its own territory if it did, if it did indeed threaten China and indeed use nuclear weapons against China. So, growing Chinese confidence, growing sense within China that they don't really have very much to fear from all of these uh, American statements. A belief that the Chinese, a growing belief that the Chinese have that the United States is bluffing and a determination by the Chinese to call that bluff. I've previously said that one of the biggest mistakes, in fact, perhaps the greatest single mistake one can make in diplomacy is to try to bluff China, because that bluff is always bound eventually to be called. The Chinese sense that the United States is bluffing them over Taiwan, and the Chinese are preparing to call that bluff. Now, this is actually a dangerous situation. Uh, it is a situation, in fact, which to be straightforward, fills me with alarm, as I expressed in my previous video. Because I'm not entirely sure to what extent the United States realises that the Chinese believe that US statements to defend Taiwan are a bluff. And I don't know to what extent the United States also realises that the Chinese, believing that this is a bluff, fully intend to call it, and are, by the way, uh, prepared for the consequences if it is not a bluff after all. 
I think that the United States also believes that China is bluffing. I think that the, U U the US calculates that if there is a war over the Taiwan Straits, the international reaction to such a Chinese move would be so devastating to China that it would, in effect, mean that the Chinese would be deterred from making such a move because of the economic effects that it would have on China. I think that there is a line of thinking in U the US that it is indeed China that is bluffing and that the United States is in a position to call China's bluff. My own interpretation of uh, Biden's comments is that that is what he himself believes. And as Global Times has said, some of the younger officials in uh, the US government and some of the younger members in, of Congress also appear to think the same thing. Well, I'm going to say something. I think that unlike the United States, China doesn't bluff. And I think this is the point which the Chinese foreign minister spokesman Wang Wenbin was making when he went out of his way to stress that on this issue China is not prepared to compromise or engage in any trade-offs. I think that if Americans think that it is China which is bluffing then they are horribly wrong. I think if the Americans think that they can bluff China then they are also horribly wrong. And I think that the Chinese are fully prepared to take any consequences of an uh, invasion of Taiwan. As I've, said, as I've said many times, this is for them a core existential issue. And besides, the fact that they now have a reliable ally behind them in the form of Russia, which is in a position to provide them with all the raw materials they need, the food, the oil, the energy, the high technology, all of those things means that the Chinese feel that if there is a genuine American attempt to organize a siege against them in the uh, follow up to a war over Taiwan, that the Chinese can withstand and endure that siege as they press ahead and integrate Eurasia alongside the Russians. And I would add that the Chinese media has been full of reports over the last few days about the sailing of this joint Chinese-Russian naval task force through the Japanese home islands. In fact, it has indeed circumnavigated uh, the Japanese islands, as the Chinese media said that it would. And it's now been uh, it's now been returning. It's now returning. The various ships from it are returning to their home bases. But the Chinese have been going out of their way to talk up this event, this sailing of the task force, and to emphasize the extent to which they have Russia at their back with all the vast raw materials, wealth and technology that Russia is able to offer them. So I think that the Chinese are not bluffing. I think the Chinese think the Americans are bluffing. I think that the Americans probably are bluffing. And I think that the Americans think the Chinese are bluffing. The Chinese and the Americans are going to each call at some point the, what they believe to be the other's bluff. The Chinese will discover, uh, rather the Americans will discover at that point that the Chinese don't bluff. It remains to be seen what the United States will do. Anyway, <laughs> this is a dangerous situation. It's, I think, extremely unwise to play poker like this with China over an issue like Taiwan. It makes no sense to me to play a game of poker with China over Taiwan when it's so blindingly obvious, at least to me, that it is China which holds all the high cards. After all, it is China which has the means to capture Taiwan. Its own Taiwan's own defence minister has essentially admitted as much. And the consequences for the United States to go to war over Taiwan would be so catastrophic 
that if the US policy is not a bluff, then all I could say is that it is a completely irrational one. There's also a further factor, which I think I haven't made before, but I think it's perhaps necessary to make it, which is that all this curious poker game, which has been played over Taiwan, is being played with full knowledge on the Chinese side. The Chinese media and Chinese officials have been talking about it, so the Chinese public are well informed about it and appear to support their government about it. But one can't really say the same about the United States. There's been very little public discussion or debate about this issue in the United States. And I do wonder whether if the American people were told straight out that Taiwan is indefensible, that if the United States were to try to defend Taiwan by conventional means, their military forces would be de defeated. And if the situation went nuclear, there would be nuclear strikes by China upon the United States itself. I wonder whether at that point the American people would support a policy of defending Taiwan, which is an unachievable one. This whole discussion, this whole policy about uh, Taiwan in the United States is not only ambiguous, but it is also being decided in effect in secret, despite the enormous implications of any US commitment to defend Taiwan and the disaster, either if it is honoured or if it is not honoured. Anyway, we shall see how this continues. As I said, we're going to have more of this game of bluff and counter bluff. This elaborate game of poker uh, continue. And I have to say, I do genuinely and honestly worry what the results in the end would be. And I must admit that I can't imagine that they will in the end be very good. Certainly, one shouldn't play poker with a country like China especially when the Chinese ha have, as I said, all the high cards. And we should never make the mistake of thinking that the Chinese are bluffing when their history shows that they are not, and one should certainly not attempt to bluff them when their history shows that they will always call that bluff eventually, especially when they're making it very clear that they worked out that it is a bluff. Well, Anyway, we shall see how it all turns out. Thank you again for joining me today. I hope you will join me soon for more programs on this channel and on our main channel, The Duran, where I do programs with my colleague and friend, Alex Christoforu. Please also uh, um, um, remember to check out Alex's channel. You'll find links under this video. Please also remember to go to our other platforms, especially to Locals. I should say that I did my first experimental live show on Locals last week. That's a, 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 a live which I did myself directly with the Locals community. They were able to ask me questions. It lasted for 90 minutes because I wasn't confident about the technology. I'm somebody who's never confident about technology. I didn't announce that uh, live, live stream in advance, but I will be doing more live streams and I will be announcing them in advance in future. And if you want to put questions to me, well, the best way to try and do that is to do that on the live stream on Locals. But that, of course, means joining Locals. And that is what I would urge you anyway to do. You won't just find material there from me. You'll find it also from my colleague, Alex Christoforo. But I would add that our Duran community on Locals, which is now thriving, also regularly posts its own comments. And if you want to post comments on all the kind of geopolitical topics we've talked about, Taiwan, China, the China-US relationship, Ukraine, the European Union, and what goes on there, all of that, well, you're more than welcome to do so on Locals too.
And of course, we're not just on Locals, we're also on other platforms like BitChute, Library, Rumble, Odyssey, and the new free speech uh, uh, platform, SuperU. And of course, you can support us by going to our via Patreon and Subscribestar, and by going to our shop, buying the amazing things that you will find there, our great magic mugs, our hats, <laughs> our sweatshirts, our hoodies, and all the rest. And if I would ask you also to uh, tick the like button to this video if you've liked this video, and also please remember to check your subscription to this channel. Um, suffice to say, there have been all sorts of comments on some of the threads about how people find that they're not subscribed anymore. So please make sure that you have a live subscription if that is, if you want to continue to engage with this channel in future. And thank you for joining me today. And I look forward to you joining me again soon, both on this channel and on our other channels and on our other platforms. And have a wonderful day. Until then.